Alright guys, welcome back to our tutorials on the top-down shooter. Um, what I'm going to start looking at now, and it's been kind of plaguing my mind a little as to exactly how I would start to cover this, is um, enemies and like things to actually shoot at in your top-down shooter. Um, the reason it's I'm trying to work out how best to put it is because um, obviously there's actually a lot of questions involved depending on exactly how your game works as to how your enemy should be and I want to provide the most sort of generic and most useful um, methods of doing things so that it can be applied to as many different situations as possible. So in the meantime I'm just going to show you how to make something that reacts to your bullets and will lose hit points, for example, and, and die. Um, because that's basically the thing you'll, you'll want to probably apply no matter how you're doing enemies. So, I mean, uh, I mean, it depends exactly like whether or not you're doing levels, or you're doing, you know, you're doing a, like waves of stuff, or stuff is coming forever, or it's coming in set patterns, or or how the object wants to move around. So all I'm gonna do in this is make an object, and I'll make it move downwards because you know, we already know how to do that, and we'll make it so that when it takes like four hits, it dies, and then you know we'll move on from there. And we'll build up something that you know resembles. A proper game, and we'll make the enemy shoot back and that kind of thing. But for now, we'll just make it so we'll make an enemy, you shoot it, and it dies. So, I mean, I've already made a little sprite for our enemy, it's just a little red face. <laughs> um, and I've put the origin of that sprite in the center. So, we first of all obviously just need to make an object for our enemy. So, obj underscore enemy will do nicely. Uh, set the sprite to be spr underscore enemy, or whatever you've named your enemy sprite. And then, just for starters, we'll just place them around the room. Chances are, you won't actually have... I mean, that there's a way of doing enemy waves if you just built, like, above your room a bunch of enemies that would move down into the room and you would kill them, that kind of thing. But chances are, you will have, later in your game, other objects that generate, like an object underscore enemy generator, for example, that generates the waves or, or patterns of enemies that you, you want sort of thing. But for now we'll just place a few of those into our level and um, we'll give them some code. So add event on create we want them to just you know just make it look like they're enemies from a top down shooter so we'll have them scroll towards you. So if we set our V speed to equal um, just one will do I guess so that they just slowly mooch down the screen one pixel a frame towards you and we'll make it so our, oh no we don't want to add another event in create we want to give them uh, hit points so we can we're making our own variable up now this isn't one of the variables that's actually set um, by the enemy itself it's not like not like one of these red variables that actually sort of you know means something to the object this is a variable we're creating ourselves so we're going to set hit points um, or one you know you could call it anything you could call it you could call it actually hit p or whatever you want I'm just going to use hp for now um, we're going to set hp to four um, semicolon click tick and then what we want to do now is go to add event and in our step event we basically want to compare our hit points to zero every frame and if our hit point is equal to zero uh, kill the object um, so We've already discussed how to do if statements before, so I mean, if HP, oh, open bracket first, HP equals zero, oh, equals equals zero, that's the, the comparative you should use when you're actually comparing a value, I suppose. That will work, but you specifically should use this. I could, I might link an article in the description that kind of explains better as to why you should do that but um, it's sort of kind of a bit complicated for now but if hit points is equal to zero um, instance underscore destroy simple as that now all we need to do is make it so that when our bullet collides with our enemy the enemy loses hit points and we destroy our bullet at the same time so we probably want to do this inside the bullet itself if we go to add event, um, in fact, we won't use the collision event here. 
Um, we'll just do it straight up in our step event so that you can see a little bit about how to code collision events because that'll be a big thing in, in later tutorials. Okay, so what we want to use here is um, a thing called instance place. Uh, so if I set this to, right, if I say hit equals instance underscore place, open bracket, uh, x, y, object underscore enemy. Now, don't worry, I'll explain what this means. Um, instance place is a special function um, that checks, basically it will place a virtual copy of um, the object that called it, so it will place a virtual copy of our bullet sprite at the coordinates we give it, so I've just used x and y, so it will place it at its own coordinates, and it will check those pixels, the pixels of your sprite, at that position to see if it overlaps with um, any object sprite that you, you've put here. So it'll check to see if it hits that. If it does, it will return the I to hit, will become the ID of the thing, the, the object that it found. Um, if it doesn't find one of these, it will simply return um, a special variable called no one. So all we need to do now is say if hit does not equal no one well that simply means now is um, if uh, if hit did not equal no one that's what exclamation mark equals means not equal if it does not equal no one that means we've hit someone that means we've found an object enemy that does overlap with our with our bullet object so now what we need to do is say hit, which now, as we know, is equal to that object. So hit dot hp, which is a variable that we set within the object, uh, minus equals one semicolon. So now, if we if we haven't hit nobody, then take the person that we hit, reduce their hit points by one, and then we just need to get rid of the bullet that we created. So instance destroy bracket bracket semicolon and then let's try running that so now if we shoot at this guy as you can see when they take four hits they disappear oh well, we get this no we missed that one. oh well but yeah as you can see I mean I don't run that any number of times now you know, bam 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 dead 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 and that's how you kill those. So that should give you now a basic understanding of how to shoot at things and make them die. Um, all sorts of different areas we could reach into from there on enemies in terms of like making them give off a little special effect before they die, or you know, creating particles and make them explode, um, how to make them move around in different ways, different ways of spawning them, but while I consider what the best area is to move into with that, or what most people want to see with that, um, I'm leaving this tutorial at that so that you can, you know, you, you basically you get the basic idea and you know, you're encouraged to kind of explore and see what you can change by yourself. Because I mostly just want to teach you sort of programming concepts and stuff so that you can basically work out in your own head okay I need to do this thing so I need to set this alarm to be this and I, I need to ask the game to check whether or not I'm hitting this thing and then if I am to do this thing and so on and so forth and you'll be able to logically go through in your head you know establish what the problem is you're trying to solve and, and be able to build it out of code yourself because that's ultimately the goal of, of teaching you how to use these things. It's not just to be able to teach you how to do every situation that you, know, you want to ever create, but to hopefully give you enough key concepts so that eventually you can do this kind of thing yourself. And like the help menu especially, very, very, very powerful. Shows you every single like different line of code in the game. So if, you, if you're thinking, oh, I wonder if there's like a, a line of code that you know will, will, will move my object in a particular direction or something like that, you could you know, just type in like move and be like, oh, move, move towards, you know, um, you know, move to contact action and like lines of code that are in here, uh, move towards point, for example. And you know, you can find all this kind of stuff in the whole menu. Um, 
Well, that was a bit of a tangent. I just went off there. But either way, we've we finished this uh, this particular tutorial on um, on shooting enemies. Um, as you can see, I've just begun sort of neatening neatening up the game a little bit in the background as well. Create some little scrolling stars. Just using things we've already covered in previous tutorials. You should be able to work out how to how to make the the, the stars scroll. What I've done to create this sort of you know a little fake depth kind of thing is just have two transparent backgrounds with stars on them and simply made one scroll slower than the other and that creates this really really easy sort of fake illusion of uh, of depth to your scene. So that's a little thing I did. I'll probably include the GMX file of what I've done what we've done so far. Just so you know if you if you are having any problems keeping up or anything like that you can you can look through the code that I've that I've written for all of this stuff and um you know, go through it yourself and compare it to the code you've written and you know, work out any problems you might be having. So yeah, that's that. Um and I will see you next time guys. Have fun.